Uh, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> uh, I am David Ronsley. I'm the uh, Senior Technical Coordinator for the um, the Aggregate Data Unit within the uh, UK Data Service. So we deal primarily, primarily with um, aggregate data from uh, the UK Census of Population and from um, international providers like the um, IMF, uh, the World Bank and the OECD. Um, I've been working with census data since 1995. So I've just been through my third census now. So I'm starting to get a hang of it. Uh, I'm just going to stop my video so we can concentrate on the uh, slides. So um, we'll start with a little quiz. This, this is probably the last time I'm going to be able to use this one. Um, I've been using this slide now for roughly eight years. Um, and so it refers back to the 2011 census. So um, we haven't got a poll for this one. So it's, it, it's just a little bit of fun. Um, in your mind, can you tell me in 2011 how many people in the UK identified their religion as Jedi? So in 2011, in the census detailed religion question, there were 176,632 people who identified as following the Jedi religion. So this is aggregate data. So it's it's information about the characteristics of a group of people at a geographic level. Now, um, this morning at 9.30, the detailed religion data from the 2021 census dropped into uh, uh, my, um, my outbox. And there isn't anyone in there that is down as following the Jedi religion. Now, I'd, I'll, I might have to ask ONS what's happened to that, because that's a huge difference. Maybe they've gone into another religion box, I don't know. But um, uh, there were 5,054 people following the uh, Satanism religion, if that's of any interest. So that's that's the um, the detailed religion data that has dropped this morning. So I'll be updating this slide with something else. So um, aggregate data is all about uh, populations, groups, regions, or countries. So it could be anything. So it could be could be about people, could be average life expectancies, it could be employment rates, uh, gross domestic product, it could be greenhouse gas emissions, or in this case, census headcounts. And aggregate data can be time series. So a lot of our international economic data is time series going back um, 70 or 80 years, um, or it can be a single point in time. So although the census is, um, in effect, it's a time series, it's also a single point in time because it's, it's only once every 10 years and it changes so much uh, over those 10 years. So the question on Jedi is probably not, useful to yourselves um, unless you're find, uh, planning on founding a church um, but if the above diagram was was your local area um, and the the numbers represented households where you can identify single person households uh, that is people living alone and you can add in the characteristic that the person living alone is over the age of 60 Using that information, we can build up a picture of where in the country we could target resources for looking after vulnerable people uh, who might perhaps be shielding from, well, two years ago, would have been shielding from COVID. <clears throat> so the census of population in this in, uh, in the UK is, is every 10 years. Um, the first modern census that we would recognise uh, as having characteristics similar to the one that we have in 2021 that first started in 1841 there were censuses before that back to about, uh, about 1815 i think um but they were more ad hoc um the data is held secure for 100 years and then the original um papers are released to the public um we have digitized censuses from 1971 there there is actually data out there from 1961 now, um, but I don't know if it's readily available yet. Um, and this was the last ever census as we know it. Although they said that the last time as well. 
there are plans to use more and more administrative data to uh, and, and um, one-off um, polls to, to 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 replace the census. I'm not so sure. I think it's going to keep going for a bit longer yet because we're very good at doing censuses, brilliant at doing censuses. We're not so great at keeping administrative data. So uh, we talk about a UK census, but it's not a UK census. It's it's three different censuses. Um, one is Scotland, held by the uh, National Records of Scotland, formerly the GROS. Uh, one in England and Wales, held by the Office for National Statistics. And one in Northern Ireland, held by NISRA, the Northern Ireland Statistics and Research Agency. Um, they are broadly the same, but they are also different in, 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 in certain ways. There are differences in the geographies that are used. Uh, geography thresholds can be different. Geography names are certainly different. The numbers of geographies are different as well. <laughs> there are different questions asked. Sometimes the same questions are asked, but slightly differently. And the outputs from the uh, census um, can be different as well, <clears throat> because each agency is, is responding to the needs of their nation. There is lots of harmonization and the agencies work together to try and make sure that um, there is enough harmonization so that we can do cross-border analysis. And that um, for 2011 and 2001, um, we ourselves produced a UK census that combined um, the, uh, the three different censuses. Um, but for 2021, 22, because there are differences in the questions, and also because there's, there's that time difference between the Scottish census, which was held a year later, that UK census might be very different. It, it doesn't exist yet. Um, there is work going on to create that. What might happen is that we there will be um, a an advisory board put together to um, advise users on how best to do um, cross-border analysis. So the England and Wales census was held in, in 21st of March 2021. There was a 97% response rate, which is phenomenal. Um, average completion time was just 23 minutes. So that was for the online uh, census. Um, following that, <clears throat> there was a census coverage survey so the ONS went around and found out where, where was covered well and where was, wasn't covered well and why. And they followed up and tried to fill in the gaps. There was also a census quality survey where they tried to understand um, how questions were answered, were they answered correctly, were people having problems with answering certain questions. And then they did a lot of output consultation with interested groups. Um, UKTS was involved in that for uh, the academic community, but all sorts of other users from local authorities, charities, community groups, uh, and commerce to ask them what, what they wanted out of the census. Uh, and from that, we're now getting the output. So we've, we've already had a number of releases. Um, ONS did a fantastic job on um, on their collecting the census uh, and compiling it. Their output timetable is running a little bit later than it should be um, due to um, increased consultation with local authorities. They, they put out some data to the local authorities and asked them to um, comment on it and the local authorities took um, quite a long time responding to that. So the Northern Ireland census was held on the same day, um, went through all the same, um, all, all the same um, uh, milestones. Um, their, their census has been absolutely perfect. Uh, the response rate was fantastic. Um, their coverage was fantastic. Their outputs prospectus is going absolutely to timetable. Um, we get metadata and draft table outlines 
in advance so that we can prepare for the releases. Uh, it's fantastic. A plus um, going brilliantly, Nisra. Scotland, um, they took the um, they took the option of, of holding it a year later due to COVID. Um, ONS and, and Nisra took the um, were of the opinion that because they'd done so much work on it already, and one of the one of the criteria was to have the greenest uh, census ever, they'd already done uh, their paperwork, so they chose to go with the um, the twenty twenty one date. Scotland decided to do it a year later. Because of that, their response rate was initially very poor. I don't know why. I think possibly people were getting mixed messages. Oh, maybe we've had the census already. Maybe it's not happening. Who knows? However, they had an extension period. They put a lot of um, advertising and media work in, and they eventually got their response rate up to 89%, which, which um, is actually an okay response rate and with follow-up um coverage surveys they will prob they will get that um to above 90 percent um they're currently in a consultation phase on um outputs uh and they're cleaning and collating the um the responses they've got we don't have any dates on when that data will be released yet but um i would think late spring early summer 2023 so the um census outputs in England and Wales, uh, we've already had population and household estimates. Uh, initially, we had rounded estimates. We've now had um, unrounded estimates. We've got um, some releases on household and resident characteristics, international migration, and armed forces. With um, that's new to this census because a question on the armed forces was held. We've got data from country level down to what's known as middle super output areas or output area level. So um, an output area is roughly 150 to 400 people. So that's the lowest level of data you'll, you'll get. So we've had information on sex, age by single year, sex by single year of age, number of households, population densities, um, Households, number of residents in households, legal partnership status, um, living arrangements, and households by some deprivation dimensions. Uh, we've had information on country of birth, passports held, um, and length of residence. And in Northern Ireland, we've had broadly similar outputs. Uh, we haven't had anything on armed forces. There wasn't an armed forces question held in Northern Ireland. Uh, I'll, talk about that more later. Um, Northern Ireland data at the moment is only at country and local government district level, nothing on um, output area. So next census releases. So today we've had uh, a release from the Office for National Statistics for England and Wales on um, ethnic group, national identity, language and religion. And we've had some updates to the census maps that they've the ONS have produced um, to add um, in the, um, the re recent data releases for those. Uh, we've got a very busy December. We've got Welsh language, labour market and travel to work releases from ONS. Uh, and we've got the phase two release from Northern Ireland, which um, the ONS are releasing um, areas of interest. Um, Northern Ireland are doing a, a, what they call a phase, so they will drop a large amount of data at once. So Northern Ireland's phase two is health, disability, unpaid care, housing and accommodation. And their phase three is marital status, household composition, living arrangements, sexual orientation, qualifications, labour market and communal establishments. Uh, so that's going to be in spring uh, 2023. Um, by 2023, that all this data at the moment is univariate data, so it's just single single variables. It's not variables mixed with other variables. Um, from spring uh, 2023 into summer 2023, they will be releasing their um, multivariate data. So these these are the larger, more complex tables, 
And also they will be releasing their data via the flexible table builder. So this is where you can, you can take existing tables and you can flex them. So you can slightly change them or you can mix and match your variables and the table builder will go away and say, can you do this? Will it, so will it, is it viable? Will it reveal personal characteristics that might be, um, might identify individuals? If not, if it does, they might blur the data and release it to you. Or they might say, no, I'm sorry, you can't do this. Or they might just say, yeah, it's fine. You can, you can have this data. So we, we've, we've seen this in operation with some test data sets. Can't wait to see it um, working with real data. Um, that's going to be a bit of a game changer. We've never had anything like that before. And then the final releases at um, the small geographies for multivariates will be ongoing from summer autumn 2023. So what can census aggregate data tell us? <clears throat> it is the most complete source of information about, about the UK population. Nothing comes close to this. Um, it's data about populations, employment, ethnicity, housing, you name it. That's the aggregate data, but it, it's more than the aggregate data. There's uh, geographic boundary data for making maps. There's micro data for looking at uh, smaller populations and um, anonymized individuals. There's flow data. So there's data about where people move. So it might be where they live and travel to work, or it might be where they've migrated within the country or where they've come into the country, international migration. And then there's derived data such as um, deprivation data. You might have heard of Townsend or Carstairs scores. Um, and there's also spatio-temporal data. So that's looking at how the population changes between, say, night and day. So there were new questions in 2023. Um, there's a question on gender in England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. Um, it was a voluntary question. Uh, we haven't seen any data from that yet. We're, um, um, we're really looking forward to seeing that. That's, that could be very interesting. Um, as you can see, the question was slightly different. Um, the lilac colored one was the question asked in England and Wales. The, the black and white one was the question asked in Scotland. The question on sexuality wasn't asked in Northern Ireland, um, but it was asked in England, Wales and Scotland. And again, uh, the way the question was asked is very slightly different. Uh, veteran status. So this is people who have served in the armed forces, but um, are no longer in the armed forces. Um, it wasn't asked in Northern Ireland. Um, it's obviously, um, that's a very uh, sensitive um, question for Northern Ireland. Um, they will be attempting to, uh, sorry, um, if you can hear that, it's with dogs. Um, yeah, so not asked in Northern Ireland. Um, they will attempt to recreate the, that, the answers from um, administrative data. Um, we have had um, output from this for um, England and Wales. Um, we've had, um, I think, four data sets out of that, which are, we've, we have available. And health conditions uh, was, wasn't asked in England and Wales, but was in Scotland and Northern Ireland. Scotland included a, a writing option that Northern Ireland didn't have uh, and slightly different, um, slightly different um, tick options as well. That could be very interesting with Scotland if the people are writing in for possible uh, long COVID conditions. So what it can't tell us, can't tell us anything about wealth or income. Um, there are no questions asked on that uh, at all. Um, there is some derived deprivation data from, from um, other information within the census. So number of people living uh, in a house, um, um, access to cars and vans, that sort of thing. Uh, there is no personal ident identification um, for 100 years. 
uh, there's data blurring and, and obfuscation, and uh, there is sometimes cell swapping so that people can't be identified as individuals. Um, census geography is tricky. Um, the building block for census uh, geography is the Alp area, which is about 150 to 400 people. Um, it it's doesn't you're not going to come across the output area anywhere else um it's just for censuses um it's the output areas are built once the census has been taken um they're designed to have similar population sizes and they're designed to be socially homogeneous and to not spill over certain physical boundaries so, such as large roads rivers um they're not supposed to be part residential and part industrial for instance um and that's why they are built after the uh, census is taken so that they can work out um socially homogeneous areas output areas are then used to build up um super output areas um low layer super output areas and middle layer super output areas in uh, england and wales in Scotland, they're called data zones, or they were called data zones. They might have changed their name when they come to do the outputs. Um, in Northern Ireland, uh, there was just LSOA. They might be moving to MSOAs as well, or they might just be sticking to um, district government levels. Um, none of the above relate to anything real world. However, there's also data at um, local authority level. Um, and there will also be data at ward, uh, so that's um, council ward level, um, electoral divisions in Wales. Uh, there is no post or geography. However, we create we have created a system which will allow you to um, convert postcode geography to census geography. Um, I don't know what else to say about that. Um, oh. Um, yeah, uh, Scotland Scotland has slightly different thresholds for output areas um, because the Scottish population is different. It's very sparse in, in certainly in the north of the country. So in Scotland, it's a, a minimum of 50 people, whereas in England, it's a, a minimum of 100 people. Um, yeah, it's tricky, tricky. It also changes as well for every census, very slightly. The um, output area geography is, is designed to um, to be um, stay as similar as possible to the last census, but there are changes over time. It can't be helped because the population changes and where it lives changes. So um, to access our aggregate data that we have um, now. We have we have three different ways of accessing data because the way um, we're funded has been has, has meant that we've we've created new platforms, but also the way the way that we're trying to um, uh, to allow access to the data um, is different as well. So we have Infuse and Casweb, which um, allow you to get at um, individual output areas if you want, and it will allow you to get to individual variables. Whereas our data in CCAN is, is bulk data. It's just grab as much as you can, and then you can take it away and put it into your own um, statistical software systems into Excel or SAS, Stata, SPSS, whatever you want to put it into, you can do that and you can analyze it yourself. Um, I will very quickly, I'll very quickly show you CCAN. So this is what we call our CCAN. CCAN is a, a, um, a data platform uh, in use in a lot of countries around the world for sharing data sets. Uh, it's got a fantastic search engine. So we can we can look for, we can search for anything we like. We want to search for 2021, we'll see if we find that. There we go, 33 data sets found for 2021. We could search for ethnicity. There we go. And 
we get our data back. Or we can use these little tags at the side to search for things. So if you want to search for all 2021 data sets with their ethnicity in, there we go. So this is our Northern Ireland data. We've got some metadata all about that. And then we have uh, the data itself. Gives you a little bit of information on that data, and then we can we can just download that, and that's that's the whole data set down, downloaded. In this case, it's an Excel file. Um, at the moment, all the data coming from um, ONS and NISRA is in Excel format. Okay, so uh, Infuse has data from 2001, 2011. We will be getting rid of Infuse. We're going to replace it with something else, and we've we've got all our data from 1971 to 2011 in a format where we can access individual variables and individual geographies. We just need to create a platform to put on top of that so we can show that data to yourselves and you can access it easily. Uh, but we won't be doing that until we've got all our 2021 data uh, in a similar format. Uh, CASWeb is our really, really ancient platform, but it has data all the way back to 1971, and it ha has boundary data for 91 and 2001 in there, if you wanted to create maps. Uh, and CCAN, um, that's got our latest data releases in there. Uh, so we have a little activity if you want to do this. If you want to go to Infuse and have a look, we've got a worksheet that you can download. Um, and you can have a look at using Infuse to get out some 2011 data if that's what you want to do. I don't know if that's if that's okay for people. Uh, the um, the relevant URLs are in the chat, so you can follow those easily. Just let me know how you're getting on. What I'll do I'll 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 get Infuse up so that you can see what's going on. So this is Infuse. And we'll be accessing 2011 census data in there. This is views, so we can get 2011 data. We can choose geography or topics first. It does take a little time, unfortunately. Infuse is, is old. This is why we want to replace it. It, it uses um, a data model that is quite complex uh, and takes a while to load things. We choose our local authority. And choose expand Birmingham. We want to choose all wards and electoral divisions. And then we add that. Confirms that we've added all wards and electoral divisions for Birmingham. Go next. We're going to select from the left hand side, we're going to select household composition. And then we're going to look at. This first option here gives us some information about that particular um, variable. We have a look at total of households and one person households where they are age 65 or over. We'll add that. Next, get some summary information about what we've asked for. Tell it to go and get the data. When it's got that data, we can then download that. And we, we then have total households in Birmingham and, um, and also all households where there is a single person age 65 and over living alone. And when we get the data, we get, um, we get three files. We get um, a citation file, which tells you how to cite the data if you're going to publish. Uh, we get uh, a metadata file, which tells you some information about the variables. And we also get a data file that has the, the numbers in. And that's in a comma separated variable format. So um, give you a minute or two more to just go over that. But also, oh, you can do this in your own time. Um, and if you've got any questions, you can always come back to 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 us. Um, we have a help desk uh, where you can come and ask questions too. So we have had a question: When will Infuse be replaced? Please, please. Um, 
we haven't got an exact date on that because um, we're right in the middle of um, 2021 releases. So we're just trying to get the data available as soon as possible for that um, in bulk format. Um, when that's done, we will have to spend some time um, kind of taking the, 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 the tables and exploding them into their individual components. Uh, and putting them into our data model. That takes quite a while. And then we have to create um, a new interface, um, which means involving um, our um, uh, software division. So that will take time as well. So we, we're probably looking at 20, late 2023 for that, um, but we, we will have data available in bulk form as soon as it's um, published. We can't compete with um, the uh, flexible data, uh, flexible table builders that ONS and NISRA um, have um, created. So, so we're not going to. So, if you want, if you want um, to create your own tables um, via that, that's absolutely fine. What we will do that those table builders um, will have an API. So, what we might be doing is is looking at building something on top of that. Um, so that might be a visualization tool or a, a mapping tool. Okay, so uh, we've had a look at that, a quick look at Infuse. <clears throat> um, other data that's available, um, as, as we say, that there are, traditionally there's been no deprivation data. The um, 2021 uh, will have some um, um, deprivation uh, indicators in there. Uh, which are derived from room occupancy, house ownership, tenancy, car availability, employment status, etc. Um, there are also traditionally um, a couple of recipes of um, deprivation data. So there is the, the car stairs and the towns ending indexes. Um, we will hopefully be updating those with 2021 data. Um, there's also the index of multiple deprivation, which um, is created by ONS, and that's available from um, the gov.uk site. Um, and hopefully they'll be um, updated soon as well. Um, if we do want to match geographies, um, obviously uh, people people know their own uh, postal geography. They know that they know their streets, they know their towns, they know their um, postcodes. If you want to take that um, information and use that with sensors, as we have a tool for doing that, um, it's not updated with 2021 geographies yet, uh, but we're hoping to get that updated as soon as possible. Um, it, uh, it uses um, address points, Royal Mail address points, to calculate an area population, and then does some clever proportioning and, and uh, to to um, to mix and match um, geographies. Um, I'm not going to show that today. Um, so we do have an activity uh, based around that, um, which you can do in your own time if you like. So we've got some um, got some test data um, that you can upload and, and um, apportion to uh, different geographies. So but as I say, we're not going to do that today. Um, as I say, our census bulk data is available via CCAN. These are whole tables for geography areas. Um, it's fantastic to search. Uh, we have metadata and we're expanding that all the time. So we have we will have data going all the way back to 1971 uh, in there eventually. Uh, so we do have an activity based around CCAN. So if you want to go to um, www.statistics.digitalresources.gisc.ace.uk. Um, we can we can then show you how easy that is. So if you just follow the uh, instructions on screen. So on our front screen for um, for CCAM, uh, there's a huge uh, search box, uh, and as I say, it's got an excellent search facility in there that uh, it also understands. Uh, synonyms as well. So you could search for the whole term census 2021 age of arrival in the UK, or you could just maybe put in um, age or maybe even arrival might work uh, in there. 
uh, it does. <laughs> um, so we've got, a, if you put a rival in, we've actually got a number of data sets in there from 2011 and 2021. But we have England and Wales um, demography, migration data, year of arrival, and we've also got age of arri arrival in the UK. And we have a large number of data sets there. So we've got we've got the data at England and Wales level, region level, upper and lower tier local authorities. Now, upper and lower tier local authorities are something that um, the government have just introduced. So they are upper tiers are county councils and um, unitary authorities. Lower tier are uh, smaller local authorities. However, I've looked at the data and the data, some of the areas are in both upper and lower tier. So I'm not quite getting my head around that. I think I need to go back and have a look at the specification for that. Um, but anyway, local authorities, so they're local councils, essentially. Uh, we've got middle layer and lower layer super output area. So these are the um, uh, medium and smaller um, uh, census areas and also output areas. So these very small building block areas, if you wanted to look at really uh, small areas. And we've got those at, at um, the region level. So, so we've got output areas in Wales, output areas in the east of England, output areas in Yorkshire, for instance. And we've got, at the, if you scroll down last screen, we've got metadata about the, um, about the releases as well. So Manchester appears in lower tier local authorities. It is also one of those councils that appears in an upper tier local authority as well. So you could actually choose either. Of course, this is in Excel, so you would you would be required to have Excel on your spread, uh, on your computer, um, and the the Excel files that we get from the o ONS um, have two sheets. So the first sheet they they have metadata about the data set, and the second sheet has the the, the table and the data itself. Now, rather than scrolling through all these, what you can do is just select the column with the, um, the local authority name in it. And you can click on find and select and find Manchester. I've just realized that this question doesn't exactly talk about the data. So it talks about long health health term long term health problems or disabilities, but that's not in age of arrival. What I should have been asking is about a uh, number of people who arrived in the in the UK aged not to four years. I will quickly share my screen. Sorry about that. We could type in arrival, and you get. Uh, 11 data sets and, and the one we're looking for is age of arrival in the UK and if we look at we've got the upper tier and local tier so we can explore or we can just download I'm simply going to download this data I'm going to open that in Excel so my data set I shall try and expand that text on there. Maybe a bit bigger. Okay. So we have a, a metadata sheet, which tells us all about the data set and the units used. And a table sheet, which is still very small. And we can we select the, the, the local authorities and to find my Manchester. There we go. So we can find the age of arrival in the UK for five, four year age bands. Um, and I think I was, I meant to ask how many people there were aged 20 to 24 years in Manchester resident in Manchester, uh, who, sorry, who were aged 20 to 24 years on arrival. Okay, so that's a quick look at that. So you can very quickly get access to um, data. Um, 
Oh, sorry about that. It looks as though I've got, I'm using an old question in there and I need to update that. I thought I have done that. I shall update that before I send out the, the uh, slides. So uh, I'll talk about some of the other resources we have at the UK Data Service. So we're funded by the Economic and Social Research Council. Uh, we're a single point of access to uh, a wide range of secondary social science data. Uh, and we are free to use. Uh, and most of our, certainly most of our census and international data is, is um, openly accessible. You don't have to have log into anything, but some of our data is uh, behind a login, but um, it's, again, it is free to use. So um, if you go to our website, um, we have a, a large number of resources so guides, videos, um, access to webinars, uh, the impact blog, uh, case studies, um, the data catalog, uh, data skills modules as well, which I might talk about later, uh, and access to our help desk where you can you, know, you can get access to um, general or specialist help on, on, on the data. Uh, and we have a learning hub there. So if you click on the learning hub, you will get access to um, lots and lots of information there about all sorts of things, one of which is the census learning hub. So you can use that to um, learn out how to use aggregate data, um, flow data guide, microdata, how to map data with R or with QGIS, and um, access to census boundary uh, data as well. Uh, we have our um, YouTube channel as well, where you can access all, uh, all our webinars and also lots of how to do guides. Uh, we have uh, a number of data skills modules. If you're new to uh, an area, um, we have uh, data skills modules on survey data, aggregate data, longitudinal data, and um, exploring the crime surveys with R. Um, so you might want, want to know what, what's the point of census data? Well, one of the major points of census data is shaping policy. This is the UK um, budget for 2015 um, and how money is allocated uh, is very much down to the data within the census. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>